What's up, everyone? Lance Hedrick here, and today we're taking a look at the Meticulous. So this is just kind of a first look video. I'm not really doing, um, let's see, pause my, will this be a live stream or a video? This is a live stream. So um, this video is not like a full review. I just got this in literally within the last day, and so I've not done much with it, but the Kickstarter starts tomorrow. So I wanted to kind of give you a, a quick first look at this. Uh, there's been other some other first looks, uh, but I have kind of a later version, a more recent version. So I've had a lot of people ask uh, for me to kind of just do, do a little bit uh, with this. So today we're going to take a look at it. I got this on loan from Meticulous. Uh, Emily Bryant actually came in town and uh, brought this to me. So Instagram, check out her in, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but anyway, so if you're not familiar with what this machine is, it is essentially an electronic uh, lever machine. So it's, a, it's an automatic lever machine. So what you have inside is you have a motor that kind of lifts and pushes down a piston onto the coffee. So you pour water into this kind of basin, the piston lifts up, and then the motor pushes it down after the water has been sucked into the well right above the puck. And along with that, you have kind of controls right here that you're able to manipulate in order to really uh, push your coffee into different realms. So you're able to kind of uh, control the, what the, the top, top pressure is, what the, uh, and a couple, other, a couple other things we'll go through on this screen right here. But on top of that, you have a really intense kind of, um, a really, oh, my kid's banging at the door. Uh, <laughs> hello? Uh, so you have uh, you have an application that you can get on and you can control everything down to uh, drawing out the uh, extraction to 120 seconds. You can draw out the you can uh, manipulate the flow rate. You can manipulate the pressure. You're able to kind of control all the different elements of espresso extraction with said uh, with said um, machine or with the the application. So yes. So the price I think I think it's like what. 1500 1500 US dollars so probably something similar in euros um, I'm not I'm just not quite sure on how it'll be globally but 1500 and the Kickstarter starts tomorrow uh, but anyway let's go ahead and take a look at some of this so this has a 58 millimeter group head um, and, it, and it is able to and it heats the water up at the group itself so right now the group is kind of kind of warm uh, it's not like burning up I'm able to kind of hold my hand here but and in this is where you pour water. So as you can see, there's nothing here. I mean, there is, let me move some of this stuff behind it. And for those of you watching this in the future, this is a last minute, quick, um, quick little video that I have not prepared. So this was a request. People were hoping to be able to kind of see this. So anyway, this is a side profile. As you can see, there's like no boiler back here. This is a shot collar. There's no boiler back here or anything. It's just kind of a thin, Thing like that so as you can tell there's a lot of inspiration from like the flare 58 the decent espresso machine and obviously some brand language from flare even with the knob and kind of the lcd screen but um yeah so that's kind of what you have what's really unique uh is is all of that heating goes up here so there's four temperature sensors kind of aligning this uh this area where the piston is so that you can get a read uh, an accurate read it takes kind of a, an aggregate of those four readings in order to kind of inform you of where the water is at but it does take that final reading right above the puck similar to the decent espresso machine now down here you have a removable tray now what this tray is actually is it's sitting on a scale so the, the it's hardwired in the scale is so it takes energy from it's not battery operated it takes energy from the plug so uh, that's a that's a really unique thing. So the way that you're able to control the scale is you're able to. There's a button on this side, and again, this is not a full review, so I don't have multiple camera angles. Ugo's not here helping me out, so this is just me kind of winging it. But over on the side, you have a button to tear the scale, and I did test the scale with a 100 gram weight, and everywhere it was uh, consistent. So it was show, reading 100.3 with my scale, I, or with my uh, 100 gram weight. I don't know how to calibrate the scale in order to get it exactly at 100, but anywhere you put it on this uh, tray was reading 100.3 with the exception of the back left corner where it read 100.2 so pretty solid scale so that means you can read your dose on this it uh, out it weighs out using this things like that so that's what we have um, going on. Uh, so Emily, my friend here, is going to uh, let me borrow her laptop since I'm streaming using my laptop, and I will uh, uh, go through and show you some of the some of the uh, little tricks and tips you can do in order to pull espresso using this. And today I'm also I just got in the mail today the Time More 078 and the 064 Plus. 
but I, uh, the, I'm sorry, the 064S. So this one has the espresso burrs in it. This is the 078, but I put in the espresso burrs and I calibrated it. So at touch, it is chirping. So let's see. Um, so yes, we have right now we have the 064, which we have going and I'll dial in using this. And the 064S, I will just plug in whenever it, it's time to, uh, when I pull a shot with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, get some water and we will pull some shots. All right. Yes. Today I'm going to use this uh, Kenya that my friend at Londinium sent me from New Zealand. It's roasted by, I believe it's called Red Rabbit. Yeah, Red Rabbit Coffee out of New Zealand. It's a washed Kenya. Um, it's a solid espresso, so we're going to play around with this. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead. The first shots I'll pull, I will use just um, just this interface. So there's two ways essentially of making coffee on this is you can use the knob here and the interface here, which is very limiting, but you're able to, you're able to make some simple, uh, profiles there and you can save profiles from online onto here. So you're able to, uh, kind of toggle around and play with that. And then I'll pull some shots using the laptop application, um, which is still in development. Now this, I believe, uh, what Carlos, who's the, uh, owner of Meticulous was telling me is this is, I believe version eight. Um, and he's wanting to do version 10 is essentially what will be sent out to people. So this one's about two iterations off from the final product. So the things here, there are some bugs. There are some things that I wish were happening and we'll talk about them in due time, but that's kind of uh, what's going on here. So I just wanted to kind of give you that heads up. Now, the portafilter again, it's 58 millimeters and in it, I'm using the Weber Unifilter or the Unibasket, I'm sorry, uh, which fits in there just fine. Um, and I'm, there's an IMS screen inside. So that's, that's what we're using here. Um, and again, this is not a traditional machine, so it's not, it's not a pump connected by a third rod. So what you have is a motor that pushes it like this. So here's the piston over the portafilter. And so whenever the, uh, when it's sitting idle, it's, uh, it's up here like this. It goes down and sucks the water in up, and then when you start the when you start the shot, it just pushes the piston down. So it has constant pressure similar to that of a lever machine. Now, what's interesting is when I was talking to Carlos, he said that in in, in developing this, he was actually pressing uh, and measuring the weight of pressure, like from his arm, that he was um, that he was achieving in order to get the this type of pressure, that uh, um, the feed rate of the water going into it on like a Flare 58, and he was trying to replicate his arm strength. Uh, he was trying to replicate it using this piston, which I think is really interesting and really uh, innovative and, and really cool. So. All right, without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and put this in just to make sure it stays a little bit warm. It's a little weird doing it from this angle. There we go. Ah, that's not really in. All right, there we go. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to get, uh, let's see, I'm going to get this kind of close. Well, this is the one that's on. So we're going to get that. I'll get it down to, I don't know. I've not dialed in with this. This is literally, I just got this in. So we're going to just keep it kind of, uh, we're going to keep it on the finer side and we're going to see what happens at maybe... I don't know, let's put it to one and a half. All right, so I do have an Akaya. It's a little hard for me to use the scale sitting back here. And like I said, I'm working with one camera, so bear with me. Uh, hope, I hope the audio's decent. Um, I've not seen really any complaints the few times I've looked at my laptop. Um, someone asked if they wanted out if I will sing. I probably will. Let's be real. Today's a beautiful day. Um, Butterfly in the sky. I can fly twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, The Reading Rainbow. So I was uh, I was pulling shots on the P100 yesterday using the ULFs and was able to get some uh, fun blooming style shots, um, which this is more than able to do. Uh, anyway, all right, so I'm gonna put this in its locked and loaded position. I'm gonna start the grinding. All right, so grinding, you know, at like a one and a half on here. I have no idea what this will be like, so I'm gonna just take a look. We're gonna try to pull a shot. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not really worried about it because I'm dialing live on this. Check, audio is singing. Ayo, we are singing, 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 ayo. So this uh, motor, uh, it tops out at 180, but it's sitting, uh, sitting motor rate is 150 watts, which they tried to clarify and it's kind of funky, but um, yeah. So we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. Let me do my little. Okay, I think this might be a little coarse, but we're gonna go with it anyway. All right, I got my collar here. I need to get some Wolta going. So what's really nice is because this doesn't have like a big boiler and you're adding water to it, uh, I'm gonna do shameless self-promotion. I co-founded a company called Lotus 
and uh, I can make my own kettle per uh, per brew uh, of water in order to pour in. And this will heat it up on its own, or you can pour in preheated water, and that will uh, make make brewing much faster. So kind of a cool idea that you could do is you could set a timer. If you have the fellow EKG pro or that new one, whatever it is, uh, the one I have, uh, you're able to set it. So it boils when you wake up and then boom. Hey, thanks for the $5 that I appreciate that. That's great. Um, to Maldoror. Thank you. What's your favorite recipe for the Pepe Hion? Got mine today. Um, I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so I'm going to make some water and I'm going to pour it in here, uh, just using one of my recipes and yeah, we'll get going. My studio is a mess because I just opened like a thousand packages. That is gross hyperbole, but uh, we're going to go with it. We're going to run with it. Oh, no! Okay. All right. Oh, fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. <clears throat> oh, Frankie S. Oh, Frankie S. We're going to do a few drippy drops. Drip, 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 drip. We're doing a decent amount of uh, alkalinity because this is uh, kind of a bright Kenya coffee. We're going to beep, 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 ba -da -ba -da -ba. Actually, I'm just going to use that for hardness. Not going to do a lot of hardness and then I don't really need the lid. All right, so I'm going to just I'm gonna go ahead, prep my chaffee. Oh, I'll just tighten that in. We're going to put this here. We're going to dump the grounds in. This feels light. I mean, it just doesn't, I don't, I don't like that catch cup. Um, and here's my WDT. We're kind of like, we're just chilling. We're vibing. We're doing this sitting down. There's my WDT, the happy tamper WDT. Just give me a little swirly squirrel. Sorry about that beep from my laptop. I think that means I got a text massage. All right. So we're going to do a little tappy tap, happy dance. I hate how this, uh, doesn't fit on the unifilter very well. Then we're going to do a little tamp here. Beep. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to lock and load. I guess I should go ahead and get the water heated. Yikes! So we're just going to... So you see I'm just pouring kind of right here. Boom. All right. So that's all you got to do. You pour it in. You can obviously measure water, but this has a scale. It's going to measure it on its own. I'm going to use just a breeze tussle cupping bowl for this, but I'm going to come in here. I shouldn't have prepped my shot already. This is going to be an ugly shot, but uh, I'm going to choose new, uh, new preset. And I'm going to, let's see, whoops, new preset. We're going to click. There we go. So new preset. I'm going to set it to a, a, t a pressure of Let's set it at eight bar. So on here, you can't pressure profile or flow profile. You can only set kind of like the, the OPV, so to speak, uh, the, the, the high pressure. So I'm gonna set the temperature. I had it at uh, a fun temp earlier. We're gonna set it to just 90, just 90, no worries. Uh, then pre-infusion, yes. So there's a set pre-infusion. Output, we're gonna put it to, I don't know, I have 20 in. Let's just do 20 and 40 out, just for funsies. Uh, purge is automatic, save, let's save it. And so that's what we're going to use is this preset. So all I'm going to do in order to start it is I'm just going to hold this down. Yep, there we go. So it's sucking the water in. Sorry you don't get a close-up again. I'll do a full review of this, but that's not right, Emily. No, it's not. Was that in the purge position before you added the water? Oh, I didn't purge. That's why. Sorry, I was supposed to purge it. We just turned it on. That was the first shot I pulled on it. I think in the final, it'll automatically do that for you. Okay. But if it's not in the right position, you're adding water early, and so then when it actually touches down, it just goes. So that was a user. <laughs> that was a user error. Um, I did not realize it was not in the right position, and I pulled a shot with the not in the right position, like a dumb, dumb doo-doo head. So I needed to have the piston down. Uh, listen, give me some, give me some, give me some grace. I'm here live. I'm frantic. I, I've, I, I like just came home to this and it's like, it's a whole thing. All right. We're going to go again. I'll no worries. Set it for you if you want just the water. Oh, oh, oh shoot. I'll reset it. I'll no, it's all good. Uh, so we're going to purge the rest. I'm just going to click it. Uh, how do you purge on this? I don't know that you can do purge on that. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to reset on that lappy top. All right, sorry about that again. And thank you, BGH1913. Let's do a little 
Oh, that was just cold water being pushed through. I'm going to go all the way up to go all the way down to give it everything yep. else. All right. So Emily's controlling this with her laptop. So you're able to do a lot of control with a laptop with the... All right, here we go. We're just getting all the rest of the water out. So it's like the Flare 58 in that when you fill that reservoir, you have to get the rest of the water out before you do another shot. Otherwise, water is just going to pop on out. So um, now we have it in the, the ready position. So I'm going to pull this out in a second, and I'll reprep the shot, and we'll actually get a shot of espresso, not, uh, not this. All right, so there we go. Puck should come out pretty cleanly because we ran a ton of water through it. Yep, it did. Let me just wipey wipey, wikey wikey. Um, all right, so we got that. All right, failed shot. Now we have it in the right position. What's your favorite dish? All right, redo. All righty, all righty, crikey, here we go. Ooh, there we go. Boop. Woo! All right. So it's the 064S. Uh, that is what I'm grinding with. But yeah, taste it. People want me to taste it. It's Luke. I mean, it's it's room temp water. It's very good. It's refreshing, like Jenny on a summer day. Baby, baby, I'm in love. What can I say with Jenny and the summer day, baby, baby, baby? Yeah, I'm not weighing the. Uh, I'm not weighing it. I'm, I'm not really like. I'm just giving y'all a first look. This again was. I, I realized the Kickstarter was tomorrow. I don't have enough time to actually make a video, edit, and post it before tomorrow. So I thought this was better than nothing. So. um you better love, love me do. You know I love you. I'll always be true. So please love me do. All right, so now I'm actually filling the reservoir because the piston is actually in the proper position. So I'm fill, 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 fill. And then when I start it, it'll actually heat it up to the proper temp. So there we go. So what I'm also going to do, just for this video, because it's going to be a little faster, this is a little hack that they made in order to help heat it up faster. It's kind of a lid so that the, whoopsies, there we go. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to actually start it for real this time. Hold it down. I didn't hold down long enough. Once more. Oh, there it goes. Yep, so we did do it. All right, so now it's going to heat up for a bit. I probably should have, again, I should have heated it up before putting the puck in, but it is what it is. Um... So it takes a couple minutes to heat up, so that puck might be a little, you know, a little uh, aerator or something. I don't even know, but it's going to be what it's going to be, and we're just going to deal with it. All right. So, um, yes, it's a decent tamper. Oh, let's see. I'm going to try to catch up to some of this. What's the tamper? It's a decent V3. How long is my hair? It's not looking good right now. I hopped on this, and I don't like to have my hair up when I hop on. I like my golden locks. But uh, currently, it's about that long, okay? Uh, not, not too long, but uh, we're getting there. Um, yeah, all right. Okay, let's get this back up. Oh, all that hair. Get it back up. All right, so the bad boy's heating up. So we're hitting, uh, we're heating this up, and yeah, here we are. Lance, buddy, I need one of these. Do you? Puck will be dry, though. True, the puck will be dry because you kind of purge the rest out. Yep, four minutes later. It does take a little while. Um, it takes a little while. Um, let's see. Would love to know if you would recommend the 064 SS grinder for non-pressurized espresso. So, so here's the deal. With the, um, with the, uh, um, the Time More Grinders, I will be doing a full review, but uh, the, the Kickstarter ends early May, and so you can, you can submit a refund uh, prior to that. So I, if I were you, I would take advantage, if you're, if you're considering, if you're on the fence, I would take advantage of their Kickstarter price that's going to leave in the next five days. Go ahead and back it. 
uh, if you're on the fence. And then you can always cancel it and get a full refund if uh, if by early May my review comes out and it's like super negative or something. Or you know, you, or if other reviews come out because you don't obviously don't have to listen to me. But if other reviews come out and they tend to be negative, you can always cancel it and get a full refund. Um, so that's kind of I, I'm going to take my time with these. I just got them in today, so I'm not going to rush a review. I refuse to do that. And so I'm going to season the mess out of them with more, uh, like 10 kilos each of coffee probably um, in order to get a really good feeling of the of the grinders themselves. And I'm just going to take my time, post it end of April, early May to give you all a few days before the end of the Kickstarter to kind of factor in uh, my thoughts on it as well as other people that will, I'm sure, have it um, as time goes on. Let's see. Um, anybody else feeling overwhelmed by the amount of grinders and machines being released? Yes, me. Me. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, I'm feeling overwhelmed. All right, so what temper are we at? We're at 68 and a half. So you can, like I said, you can put in hot water and it's a-okay um, and, and it'll go a lot faster. Uh, but heating it up from lukewarm or from room temp like I just did, um, it's going to take a little longer, obviously. Uh, serious question. I don't see much discussion on should pre-infusion be part of the extraction time or do we just look at first drops hitting the cup? This is a highly debated thing. I go just from right when you hit that daggum button. But of course, if you're wanting to do more intense and intricate profiling, it might be helpful to talk about when first drop hits. But, you know, it, 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 it's, it is what it is. It's just to help with communication. Uh, the 078 is US only on Kickstarter, yes, but it's available most other places. I got mine through a VPN uh, shipped to Portugal, my 078. I bought it through a VPN. Um, hey Lance, would you say it's difficult pouring water in the meticulous without a gooseneck? Probably, yeah. Here, you know what? Let me just see what clearance would be like. So I have this massive, um, this is what I use for cupping. This would be fine. It, the lip reaches the lip, so I don't think that would be very difficult. Um, and that has a that has a cute little pig noise, pig nose. So what really happens is it goes, ah, ah. okay. So we got a little pig nose there. All right, all righty. Ah! So there we go. Um, how many coffees have I drunk today? Uh, not as many as you'd think. It was more so. Well, I mean, like three or four or something. But it was more so. Um, uh, I, I'm like like this because we're at 83 one, so we got seven degrees left, 6.9 to be exact. Um, it, it's more so I, this this I came home and these packages were here, so I was like, crud! I gotta I gotta tell the people about it. We got We gotta discuss this. This has gotta be this has gotta be something we discuss. Can you preheat before inserting your porta filter? So that's something that they are working on. Um, there is a preheat option. I've uh, it, it hadn't really worked for me when I clicked it, but that is something that they are aiming to have in version 10. This is version eight. Um. So thoughts on AirPress coffee in general, AirPress versus C60. I prefer V60. I'm not a big fan of uh, um, of that, yeah. Lance, ask Emily about the blooming bug. Is it fixed on the machine? Fixed. It's fixed. Emily You're says welcome. it's fixed. You're welcome. Uh, uh, I raised some hell. Emily, walk on screen real quick. Emily's going to tell you about her experience briefly as this shot. Oh, Wait, the going? shot's it's pulling. Going. I'm going to walk off screen. <laughs> okay. So the shot, uh, just uh, the water's pulled in. It hit temperature. It lifted, and now it's going to go back down. So here we go. So it's going. I can read the real-time temp right here, 89.9. It's at 0.4 bar, 0.5 bar. It's in the pre-infusion mode. We have the time going on here. So we, uh, there we go. The first few drops are coming out. So uh, we're at low pressure, about 1 1.3, 1.2, 1.1. .1. So we're just chilling at a low pre-infusion. Uh, we're at 20 seconds. I don't know what's going on now. 24 seconds, 25 seconds. Why is that at 0.7 bar? It's not, it's not it's, uh, raising pressure. This is um, probably a bug. I think it happens like one every one, six shots. Um, maybe one person. Okay, so Emily's saying this is a bug that happen, happens once every few shots. We'll pull another shot and see what happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start heating up this water so it doesn't take as long. Yeah, All right, I'm going to heat that up. I mean, it's happened to me. Oh, I can't heat it up. I took away the, uh, the transformer. Um, crud on a stick. Poop. Okay, well, sorry. You can, you can heat it up while you show the screen. Uh, let's see. Is machine design inspired by 2001 Space Odyssey? Obviously, probably Stanley Kubrick. Come on. Um... Ready for the market, boys. <laughs> it is V8. 
Uh, did you input 40 seconds for pre infusion? No, you can't input what your pre infusion is when you're using the, the dial on here. You just click yes or no. So the issue here, I'm not sure what the issue is. It's still counting time. I'm wondering if. I think it's a glitch. I don't know what's going on. It's glitching. Yeah. It's glitching like a bee. Okay, I'll stop it. Yeah, it's just glitching. Sorry about that, folks. We're going to have to pull another again. That's not good. Um, this is what I've done for the last two months. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, that's that's just real life stuff. That's just what happens. All right. So, purging, purging yes. Sorry. So, we're purging the rest out. You want to use the laptop? Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Probably a little more control. I definitely like... Sorry, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I can, I can purge for you. There we go. All right. All right, there we go. This is what happened. Never stopped. Very weird. The flow just like stopped after pre-infusion instead of ramping up. So that's definitely a buggy bug bug, uh, but we're going to try, try again. You know, Daddy always taught me that I shouldn't get up. You shouldn't ever give up. Try, try again, okay? All right, let's get the rag. All right, we're going to wipe that, wipe that. The table's all messy because of that stinking, you stinking shot. I taste everything you pull, right? Ooh! Ooh! It's not good. Um, okay, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and put the water in, like I said, and uh, we're going to let it, um, we're going to let that heat up. And we're just going to pull the same thing because we're going to test this bug uh, conspiracy theory. We're going to go ahead and pour the water in, make sure it's just a bug, or if there's a bigger problem at hand. Boom. We got that going. I'm going to go ahead and start the shot. So it's going to take a while to heat up. And there we go. All right. So we have that. All right. There we go. I have so many cups back here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna forget a cup again. All right. Let's see. Sadists. A lot of us. That's right. Let's see. When people say their daddy told them to never give up, I'm wondering: Are there dads that tell their kids, "Yes, give up"? Yes, there are. There are. There are dads that say, "Give up." But thankfully, my daddy is Daddy Hoff, um, and he said, "Don't give up, son." And I said, "Daddy Hoff, you're the patron saint and my father." And he said, "You are my son, with whom I am well pleased." And I said, "That is." That is too much for me. And he said, well, you deserve it. And I said, huh, you slay me. And he said, yes, I do. And then I said, wow, this bit's going on way too long. And he said, yeah, it is. So we're going to end it. Um, all right. So uh, now that bit's out of the way and the grinding's done. I'm going to put that in there. Bada bing, bada boom. going to take Happy Tamper WDT. EG1 versus P100 HU Burrs versus Ultra. Dennis, you assume he's pulled before with this machine. Evidence suggests that's untrue. It's that is true. Maybe you missed something while creating the profile. Use a profile that you pulled with before today. Uh, um, no, this is the that's not the case. Um, this machine on here, um, on the profile on the machine itself, um, and Emily has had this for months and, and has verified that this is definitely some sort of bug on the machine itself. Um, you can only control, it's a very simplistic profile system on the machine. And I pulled with the machine's profile system, not with the app. On the machine, you control the, uh, you control your temperature, your uh, volume, uh, so your weight out, and you control just the top pressure and whether or not there's pre-infusion. So whatever happened there, that's not even an option. It's not even an option in the software that you can, that you can access on here. It's not even an option. So uh, I thought I heard the thing going down. No, we're at 71 temp. So we're still good. Um, so yes, all I did is I chose, I think, 8 bar, 90 degrees Celsius, and I turned pre-infusion on with a 40 uh, gram output. So there's nothing I could have done to have given me that output, uh, that, that reaction with the espresso. So that's just, that is definitely some sort of bug. Um, there's literally nothing I could have done to have caused that. So that is some sort of bug that happened. Hopefully it doesn't happen this time. Hopefully that was a one and done, um, but we will see. And if it happens again, well... They have something else to fix, which is a good thing because then they know they have to fix something. Uh, I will say we did pull some shots yesterday. <clears throat> Emily and I did. Did not have this problem, so I can say that. Uh, but I did the same thing I did yesterday, and uh, it didn't happen yesterday. 
Um, let's see. Um, Lance, what's a small button on top of the piston then? So this was the initiation button, but they kind of disabled it for this version. They're still playing around with that. Um, what I'm hoping happens, and maybe Carlos will watch this. I'm sure he will. What I'm hoping happens is you can click this button, hold it down to start heating up the water and get everything fully prepped. And then this can be the final actuation. And the reason I say that is uh, the other day I put water in here and I kind of was lollygagging around prepping my shot. And I um, and the piston started to pull up and the shot was beginning before I had the portafilter actually locked in, which is obviously not great because then water will just go everywhere. So I wish there was a way for this to just get all the elements ready. And so the water heated up and then this would just be, okay, go, right? Because um, right now you click this, it heats up and just starts once it's heated up. So... All right, so here we go. We're, the piston's lifting up, meaning the water is at temp. Uh, so the water was at 90, but as it sucked down, it lost temperature. And so it has active heating elements inside. So it's heating back up before it starts, I would assume. Yep, there we go. It's back up to 90. There we go. So it was passing by uh, t uh, thermometers and was skewing the temperature, but now it's at 90. And there we go with pre-infusion. Is not. So we got that bug again, baby. Yeah, we may just have to reset it. I did just pull this from another position, and it looks like we're going to have to reset it. We got Buggy Boy here. Bug's life. We're up in a bug's life. Flick is here and is trying to be clever, and it's not working. Um, so, yep, the flow hasn't come back on. So the flow started for pre-infusion, then just cut off. That is fun stuff, isn't it? All right, now I'm pushing it through. Okay, I'm going to purge once more. All right, we're just going to have to reset the machine. N64, yeah, I'm going to pull out the cartridge. <laughs> Open it. <laughs> Clap! Just like that. Um, I think there was like a, when you turned it on, there might have been a problem, and now we're just continuing that problem each time, you know what I mean? So we need to reset it again. All right, so here we go. And yeah, not a good sign, boys. Uh, yeah, well, the, like, uh, I think I'm trying to unplug it and plugging it back in. LOL. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn off the power brick, unplug it completely. We're going to count to like 30 as I clean this mess up. Oh, there may be still water in it. Uh, I don't know. I think all that water's out. We're going to see. Yes, we will see. There we go. Yep, all the water came out. I already purged it. I remember now. All right. So we're going to reset. And that was at full temp, and it hit like 12 bar with that purge. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm not terrible. But, uh, all right. So, we got this. Placing that in. Bada bing, bada boom, skis. I'm going to take out this little contraption. There we go. Get a little cleaner. All right. Now, I'm going to plug it back in. I'm going to flick on the transformer. Turn on the machine. And... Here we go. All right. So we got this going. Um, all right. So let's see. Let's see. Turn down the lights. Light attracts bugs. Oh, dang. Did you try to grind finder? Oh, Reddit's here. Dadgummit. What are y'all doing? Um, let's see. I was being a brat, but I can totally help with bugs sometimes. LOL. Thank you, Lord Hedrick, because I am blessed today by this live stream. Thank you, Was Gaga. I'm assuming you're the uncle of Lady Gaga. Um, cool. So we got that going. Gareth Meredith, what's up? Lance, how do you like the Zerno? I like the Zerno. Um, man, people give up so easily. Stop bashing a product that's still in development. Failure is how you learn and grow. Yeah, honestly, true. And like I said, there's still two more versions. He's wanting to get all this right. He's very uh, convicted by this. And there's a lot of um, things that they're changing about it uh, in order to get it going. All right, so let's what do you do? just hit purge. Actually, hit on and then hit purge. Well, too late. Um, all right, so we've purged it down, so we should be in we should be in position to. All right, all right, let's get this going again. Pour the water in. It's time to get it heating. 
Turn it upside down. All right, here we go again. There we go. All right. We're going to just flick. And we're going to try one more time. Get this heating up. There we go. Starting to heat. Now we'll get this third time's a charm, am I right? Is that what everyone says? Thank you, Schrammer Jr. Do you prefer the Time War Rotary Knocker or the Fellow Push Button Knocker? Time War Rotary Knocker is my fave. I gush about it in my 078 review. I love the knocker. And largely, it's because it collects a lot of chaff and a lot of the fines at the end of your grinding. And so when you're doing filter, for, especially with filter, I will... I don't really use RDT with this, and at the end, I will use the knocker and remove that those chaff and those fines, uh, resulting in like a, a cleaner brew. I uh, I really like it, and I say that based off of uh, my own experience and off of uh, presenting blind tastings for other people, blind cuppings. So I, I believe in that. Um, yeah, it, it was working here yesterday though. So we're gonna try this one more time with this and then we'll move to the laptop, which definitely worked yesterday. The laptop had no problems yesterday um, controlling it from that. Um, but we'll try this one more since I've already uh, started the shot. Anyway, you can hear the, the noise level of this. When do we get EG1 versus P100? Uh, in a couple months. I, I like to take my time with these Titan grinders. I'm not gonna rush it. I've got the P100 now for about a month. I'll probably do it like a month or two left. Um, all right, all righty, so we got that, like this, wipe this out, we're at 60 degrees, so we got another 30 degrees to go, I got time, uh, someone's asking about the WDT, this is the Happy Tamper WDT, I'm seeing if I like this. I love this and the Swartz. Swartz has been my go-to forever. I love the idea behind this, but I'm not sure I love the whole the wire spread. There's something weird about it. I don't know. I don't like. I don't think I like how it spreads out. I think I prefer kind of the more straight down approach of the Swartz. Um, and so I don't know. I'm, I'm still getting a feel for it. All right. So here we are. Let me put this in. All right. There's that. Oh shoot. Here we go. Boom. All right. Making a nice little mess over here. Boop. We're at 72 degrees. Okay, so this is uh, heating up. And if this one doesn't work again, like I said, we will, because uh, we just reset the machine, we will move to this, just the laptop. The laptop again, I, I did some, you know, we did, I, we did some weird stuff yesterday. I did one with like, a, I, I put flow rate at 12 um, mils a second for like a couple seconds until it reached like two bar or something. And then I let it sit for 30 seconds at two bar. Um, and then I ramped it up to like six bar uh, and had it on a gradual decline for like 40 seconds just to see what all it can do. And it was able to replicate that as long as my grind size was fine every time. So this did not happen at all yesterday. So I'm a little... Um, I'm a little surprised it's doing it right now, just based off of my t uh, playing with it yesterday. Um, let's see. Um, 064 sound. Yeah. So that's it without uh, beans. Uh, but you can also, you, you heard, uh, when, you, when I upload it, you'll be able to hear it with those beans. And I'm sure I'll grind again in a bit. Um, let's see. Any thoughts on the Nanofoamer Pro? I'm getting one soon, hopefully within the next week. So I don't have thoughts because I don't have it. The Tamper is the Decent V3. Um, yeah. Lance says, meticulous feel gigantic. I don't think so. It's like 17 inches tall. I think they're going to lessen it to about 41 centimeters uh, for the final product. And honestly, because it's so narrow, it's literally, um, I mean, it's like two, two inches thin from here to here. And then the front base of the back, back of the base is like maybe a foot. Uh, it does not feel gigantic to me. Um, but then again, you know, I have the Bentwood, I have the EG1, I have big machines. So for me, this is, I like. I actually like the footprint. It sits against my wall really neatly um, and isn't as deep, which I, I really, uh, really appreciate. And it just looks kind of more, um, it looks more feeble, I guess, because it's, it's so thin and, and petite. Um, let's see. Any thoughts, experience with the Versalab M4? No, I do not have any thoughts on it because I don't have one. I didn't realize you were live, Lance. How are you finding the Time War? The Time Wars I just got today, so I literally am just, yeah, just now playing with them. How much is the max output of the machine? Currently, it's around 100, 120. Um, I think the reservoir, oh, here we go. So we hit, we hit temp. The piston's pulling up. Let's see what happens.
All right, Pistons going down. Okay, we got... All right, all right, it's doing something that hadn't done before. There we go. There we go. All right, we race to our eight and a half bar. There we go. There we go. All right. So here we go. We're we're pulling. It's sitting around that eight bar, which is what I uh, put it at. Um, the Unibasket's doing its thing. It's kind of doing the syrupy rain. It's going to come to a tail at some point. Uh, but this is a decently light coffee, so it'll probably take a while. There's not much um, adhesion there. But here it goes. We're pulling. We're at 7.9 .9 bar. We're hitting at 89, 90 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. Uh, let's see. The output so far is 31. We're going to go up to 40, and it'll cut off. So this is just a flat 8 bar shot. Yeah, so one of the things I have noticed consistently is that it has been overshooting the weight uh, very consistently by three grams, almost exactly. So it cuts off the pressure. It seems to be cutting off the pressure at the output, but there's still some a few grams that tend to trickle out. So this is 43 output when I specifically requested for 40, so I send it back. Um, but yeah, and so it's auto-purging, so that's what it's doing right now. So I had the auto purge set. So since we allowed it to go the final shot, it's auto purging now. So what you could do is let it go on the drip tray like I'm doing now, or you could put another cup under, but then you have it just like a Flare 58. Then you just pull it out and good to go. So um, yeah, so I'm going to pull that out here in a second, but we'll go ahead and taste this um, and see how that is. So it's very vibrant, really nice, dark chocolates, um, coating. It's, it's a solid shot. I mean, it's not perfectly dialed in, as you all know, um, because I just kind of guessed and went just to see how it works. But now I'm going to do a kind of a weird profile. We'll just play around with that. I'm going to keep the grind size the same and just see what happens. But uh, here we go. So let's put this into the puck bin. All right. Whoops. I just threw something on the ground. I don't know. It's probably like a grenade or something. All right, so we got that all cleaned up. Good to go. Here we are. Boop. All right, so now I'm going to take the computer. And this is this is something that's going to be, it's impossible for me to show you just because, again, I have one camera set up. But essentially what you have is you have four different uh, graphs. The top left is flow. Bottom left is weight. Top right is pressure. Bottom right is temperature. And that's what shows whenever your shot is pulling. So you can watch in real time the pressure, the uh, flow, weight, and temperature all separated as they go on. Now, currently, uh, one of the questions I had is if you could temperature profile. And currently, that is not an option on the software. I have to assume that will be added if not i think that is a massively missed opportunity um but uh you're, you are able to change the temperature and pull like 50 degree shots if you want but as of now it doesn't seem like that is a feature that is capable uh, of being done so that's a, that's kind of a bummer i guess but uh all right so when you go to settings in order to dial in you have two different graphs that you can control you have pre-infusion and you have infusion so i'm trying to paint this picture because it's too kind of hard to show you so with pre-infusion, you can toggle that on or off. You don't have to have pre-infusion. But for me, I'm going to raise the pre-infusion bar. I'm going to raise it up to, I'm going to do it based off of flow. So I'm raising it up to uh, 12 mils a second. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. So I'm raising it up to 12 mils a second. So we have 12 mils a second, and I'm going to have it fill at 12 mils a second until the pressure limit is at, we'll say, 2 bar. Once the pressure hits two bar, I'm going to have it move on to the actual infusion. So we're going to have it at two bars a, se uh, two a second, pressure limit is uh, or 12 mils a second, two bar pressure limit. And then what you can do is you can click anywhere on that line that you set the pressure on, and you can change the, the flow. I said pressure, I meant flow. So you can change it to a lower one. All right, so we're going to do that. Boom. And bada bing. All right. So... I'm going to set that to, I don't know, let's say like 20, 30 seconds. We'll do something weird. We'll do a 30 second. Let's see. And another cool thing is you can either have the changes linear. So if you want it 12 mils a second and then go down to like four grams, a, fill mil, four mils a second and then hold it, you can have it linear or you can make it look smooth. Uh, granted, I doubt they do much difference. I think it's mostly just what it looks like, but it might be a more aggressive 
um, reaction. I need to kind of test that. Um, I think they say it's a, it, it actually is different, but I'll need to kind of test that. Um, there is a stop weight as well. I'm going to put the stop weight at 100. I don't want it to stop. I want it to be a pressure limit. So uh, with the actual infusion, I'm going to do it based off of flow as well. Actually, yeah, we'll do it based off of, no, we'll do it based off pressure. It'll be easier to kind of talk about. We'll start uh, at 8 bar. 8 bar, bar, bar. Mine, mine. So we're going to start at 8 bar, dadgummit. There we go. So I clicked up on 8, then I'm going to, I'm going to, at, at 5 seconds, I'm going to make it come down to, I'm going to make it ramp down. It's going to hit 8, and then it's going to ramp down at 5 seconds to 6, and then at 10 seconds, I'm going to have it ramp down to 4, and then at 20 seconds, I'm going to have it ramp down to 2, and then we're going to let it ride to 40 seconds. So I don't know. We're just going to do that. That's fun. All right. So let me pull this little thing out. All right. Thanks for taking the time to do this. It's nice to see this thing in action. Looking forward to seeing the meticulous evolve. I am too. I am excited about it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this. I'm going to let that, uh, I'm going to let it start heating up. Oh, I forgot to talk about temperature. There's a little, there's a little, uh, scroll, uh, a little sliding, uh, essentially a little sliding thing on top that you can increase or decrease temperature. We'll just put it to 90 again for funsies. Um, so I have everything there re ready. And then, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and click play because it's got to heat up. So yeah, we have the pressure limit, the stop weight. We, and you can do it based off flow or pressure. And it's all very simple, very intuitive. I really like this interface uh, like a lot. I really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. So it's going to start heating up. I'm going to put this back on so it heats up a little faster. So... Here we go. Let's see. There we go. Um, so there we are. Um, okay. If only you don't need the kettle. Matias can heat from cold. Yes. So I'm heating from cold currently. You don't need the kettle. Um, and then here we go. We're going to get coffee. Let's see. Any chance on this doing a sprover? There's not enough reservoir, but actually one of the first comments I ever made on the Instagram uh, when they first launched their Instagram was um, I wish that the I wish I had a capacity of like 250. And so Carlos told me he saw my comment and immediately took that into consideration and is going to try to make that a reality. We'll see if they're able to and maintain the footprint because right now this is already pretty bulky, and so they'd have to make it either taller or wider or something. So we'll see what actually happens there and if we're able to to get that. But um, I did I did make a, I did make a case for it, so I'm hoping that they'll be able to do that. Because then you'd be able to make, yes, provers uh, and things like that. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Nothing's set in stone. There's two more versions to come out with. So, yeah, we're going to see. All right, here we are. All right, turn that off. Tappy tap. Taparooski. Bada bing. Bada boomski. Then I take this out. Boop. Do a little WT. Spirograph, a la Dan Kine. All right, there we go. Get that locked in. There we go. Ah! There we go. And we're at 55 degrees. I was fast that time. I was lightning. Okay, so. <clears throat> YouTube Live is unbelievably better than Instagram Live. Good. That's great to hear. 150 mil Sprover is in spec for folks who like to dilute. That's true. Yeah. But, but that's for folks who like to dilute, right? Um, too bad they didn't add a thermal block for speed. I, I don't think the output is 150. I think the reservoir can hold 150, so the puck's going to uh, hold on to a lot of that. Well, not a lot, but... Um, well, let's see. Any condensation issues below the lever with the magnet attachment on top? No, there is not. Not with the magnet attachment, but also they have a little fan kind of coming right here to, uh, that they've added in order to uh, stop that. So that's really nice. With meticulous, you might already have the kettle heated, so diluting your sprover is very accessible. That is true. Um, how heavy is it? Come with travel case. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like the 30 pounds, but it comes with its own travel case. Uh, can you take the laptop so we can see the machine? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, would you say Time War 07 8S is better for light roast espresso than niche? I'm going to guess, yes. That was my initial guess. I've not used it yet, but 
I, I don't like the niche at all. It has a really wide particle distribution at its peak, and that's that's not arguable. Um, and that um, when every grinder I've seen the distribution of, um, that one is my least favorite. And it also happens to have by far the widest peak. So I'm going to draw a correlation between those two things that a wide peak is going to kind of give you lower uh, a, a lower shot ceiling, I guess, as far as quality goes. But I'm speculating here. So let's make sure about that. And I also don't like bitter astringent shots. A lot of people say that it makes really great traditional espresso. I think there are flat burrs that make better traditional espresso as far as creamy and chocolatey goes. Um, anyway, do they plan on building a community like Decent did? I'm sure that'll happen uh, regardless, but I know that Carlos has talked about that with me. I've had a lot of talks with Carlos, and he's a really cool guy, but I've, uh, yeah. Um, let's good. see. Um, it's just idle. So. Uh, start on the mission. Oh, not there, not there, on the laptop. If you go. I clicked start already. I already clicked that. Yeah. There. Weird. That's why it was not. Uh, that's why you weren't accident by the time your shot was done. So um, cool. So uh, let's see. Can this do water hammer like a lever machine? Um, I, well, it doesn't in its current phase. You might be able to. You might be able. Well, you might be able to. Mm, no, I don't think you'd be able to even hack that. You'd have to. It, Carlos would have to add that as kind of a feature, I guess. Um, but yeah. Uh, do you know if the filter 3.0 will be available anytime soon? I can't find anything on it except your video with Scott. So the filter 3.0 basket, I want to like make sure that's understood. That that is made with specifically cafes in mind. So all it is is it's a large basket with big holes on the bottom. It cannot hold pressure because there are literally there's a hole at the top, so pressure escapes. So it does not build pressure. If you are thinking of something with a pressurized system, this is not that. This is literally a tricklet or a next level made in an espresso machine. So you're showering water over the grounds and letting it go through by atmosphere pressure alone by just by just gravity okay so it's just a gravity fed pour over so if you want to have that you should have something uh, th there's no point in doing that if you're just gonna sit and turn your machine on off on off on off uh, you would want something like a decent or something else that can control the flow so you would in theory if this has a bigger reservoir you'd in theory be able to do filter 3.0 on this because you could preset it just pour the water in and it would go so um, so the cap Messino the Mara that or the Maro that's being made right now, all those that you can profile the volume uh, of dispensed water, uh, you should be able to do it. But I know that Scott's making some more changes to uh, to it, so I don't know when it'll be available. Um, your opinion on the FEMA book sixty eight still stands? Yes, it does. Um, can you grind coarser one time for sound difference? Absolutely. Okay. Cold start so you can get the full extent. I'm on uh, 1100 RPM, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. What was I going to do? All right. So we're at 76.7. While we're doing this, I'm plugging in my laptop. Right. Let me just do this. There we go. All right. I'll have to spend some money on the 078S then. Might have a niche gathering dust. <laughs> Curious about what RPM you've tried for the 078S. I literally got this today, so I can't really speak about the 078S. Um, I will make a full video by the first week of May at the latest. Before the Kickstarter is over, I promise I'll have a full review. But I don't like to talk about things nearly at all in depth until I have like at least a month under my belt, if not more. So, all right, we're sitting now at 85 degrees, so it's almost there. And then we'll have, uh, we'll have this uh, situation going on. So, let's see. Let's see. 86, 86.2. All right, let's see. What do we got over here? Does it stall at 800 RPM? I don't know. We can find out. So 800 RPM, I'll do a cold start and I'll go all the way to a espresso setting. Flip that's the other way around. Uh, oh, I forgot to unplug this because I plugged in my laptop. So I'm going to plug this into another outlet because I've got a thousand outlets in here. All right. It's starting. It's starting, everyone. All right, there we go. So here we go. We've got, here we go. All right, so the pre-infusion's going up. We hit 12, 
uh, 12 mils a second, so it pretty immediately hit two bar. And now we're sitting at two bar. Well, it's at three bar actually right now because uh, we overshot. You know, it's really hard to uh, with 12 bar, uh, 12 mils a second, it hits that really quickly. So we're at 2.3 bar now. It had to lessen. It's going down to 2.2, but it'll maintain at two because that's what I told it to do. Uh, and it's going to do that for 30 seconds. So we're currently at five, six uh, grams of weight. I should have actually put, I should have ground finer, but it is what it is. Um, all right, so there we go. At 30 seconds, we ramped up to eight bar. And now within five seconds, we're down to six bar, as I told it to. Five more seconds, we're going to go down to four bar. Yep, we're now at 4.4, 4.3, 4.0. And now I told it to cut off after that. There we go. All right, so it hit, um, yeah, so there you go. So it's able to, it, it listens to, it listens to the app a lot better than uh, here. There was that bug, right? No, after we reset it, it was just fine. But um, so it, it did. It did what I told it to, uh, and it and it tracks the temperature the whole time as well um, on this. So let's kind of see where we at. We got the final temperature was at eighty eight nine seven. My set temperature was ninety. So throughout most of it, it was at eighty nine nine two to ninety point oh one. Uh, was the first, I don't know, 30 seconds. That was the pre-infusion. And then the actual infusion, it dipped to like 89, 88.97 to 89.3 or so. And it ended at 88.97. So uh, pretty solid temp stability there, kind of in real time. Um, let's see what this is like. I mean, it's just a random profile, just having some fun. Let's see. That is very, 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 very acidic. Um, uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, is there a problem keeping ground coffee for four to five minutes to air or exposing a coffee pot? Uh, so the hot part, I don't think is much of a big deal. The air, yes, it's going to aerate. Um, this isn't, I'm not doing this for quality shots. I'm doing this just to kind of showcase the, uh, the okay. machine itself. So didn't purge. Oh, I don't have it on auto purge for, uh, so um, so yes, let's see. Um, hi, Phil. Um, yeah, there's the AFers in here for sure. Uh, is the meticulous body steel or aluminum? It is, I'm not, not sure. Aluminum. It's definitely not aluminum, but is it steel or is it, well, you know, I don't know. All I know is that it is a magnetic metal. So we know that, um, but I can't help you beyond that. Let's see. Does Meticulous have a color screen? Would be cool if it could turn orange while heating. It does have a color screen. I don't know if it turns orange while heating, but they're like, for instance, the little uh, pressure gauge, the little needle is uh, yellowish. Let's see. Would love to hear a comparison between 07 and... Well, so, uh, for, again, for everyone watching, I will review the the, uh, the the these Time War grinders. I will. I just got them today. Literally a few hours ago, they got on my doorstep. So, I will review them. I am not going to rush a review though. I will review them uh, um, probably by within a few days of the Kickstarter ending so that if you pledge in order to get a good price on them, you have time to back out. But I don't want to rush my review of it. Let's see. Is this a machine more for profiling espresso? Yes. This machine is like, its number one thing is that it's espresso. There's no steaming. And so um, that, that this is made for people who want to nerd out on espresso, uh, have automation, uh, have, have quality of a lever. Um, and you, you also have all, all the profiling po uh, po uh, potentiality of like something like a decent for the most part. Um, and, and honestly, it's a lot more intuitive way of profiling than on the Decent's uh, application. I'm not a big fan of that because you have to kind of like click, 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 click in order to raise or lower temp or flow or anything like that. This one, you kind of just drag the profile, which I think is kind of fun, really nice. Um, as far as like a lot of the more specific questions, I literally just got this in. I'm going to have to have a play with it and then talk to Carlos, have a follow-up call with Carlos to really kind of, kind of understand all of the intentions behind a lot of the decisions. And as far as the capabilities of sharing profiles and things like that, I'm going to have to really have a conversation on how that will be done. I know that he told me that is an aim, but um, I, I'm curious about uh, execution and all these things. And uh, I'm sure he's still working through a lot of that. So before I make kind of a, a more robust review of this um, in its current phase, I'm going to want to have a little bit more uh, chats with him. So yes, currently it's 43 centimeters, but they're looking to shave two centimeters off to 41. Can you imagine Lance doing a bad review on the Time Wars? They'll see their orders tank. I could, and that's why I'm telling... Well, I, I don't know if I will on the 78. I love the, the 078 so much. Now, the burrs may suck. I don't know. Um, 
I, I don't know. That's, that's the main thing. As far as the body of it and how it works, I love it. I've not been, so far, the body of the 064 is nice. It's got that same heavy metal, uh, but this is super cheapy feeling. It's like aluminum, really light, kind of grody. And the feeling of the clicker isn't the same premium feeling. It feels just cheaper. Um, but everything else does feel kind of the same. So we'll see about it. I don't like the opaque hopper, but we'll see. Uh, don't review them, but can we hear the sound grinding of the 078? Yes. So let me, let me put this adapter on. All right. All right. So here we are. Let me plug this in. All right. So we got this. So there we are. Let me get some beans in. So here's the 078S. I switched the birds on an Instagram live, but we're going to... All right, so that was that was kind of like at a medium grind size. I'm gonna I'm gonna grind just off chirp, and we'll go at a low RPM. This is a fairly light roasted coffee. It's not that light, but it's fairly light, and we'll go from a cold start. So we're going cold start. We're at the lowest RPM, and. Pretty good, pretty good. All right. Nice. So that was at, that was essentially at burr touch. Cool, and that was at the lowest RPM. Uh, lowest RPM on the 064, essentially at burr touch. What the heck? Or at zero. There's a little coffee left in that. Let me turn it up to purge it all out. There we go. All right. So let me get. We'll go cold start. We'll do the same coffee. I would say it's about a 13 gram dose or so. All right. So cold start. Almost at. Well, at zero. Yeah, at zero. Cold start. Lowest RPM. Pretty light roast of coffee. Takes quite a bit actually. All right, so that's enough of the time where I'll do a full, I'll do full reviews. Get, just give me a little bit of time. Um, so as far as the meticulous goes, I am super excited about its potential. Like I said, you can, uh, and and again, they're going to continue to work on this. Um, but you you have full control over flow with uh, within the quote unquote pre infusion, which isn't a helpful term, but they have the pre infusion and the infusion, uh, which are two separate categories. I'm not sure how helpful that is, but you do have those, and I think uh, they're very open to input. So if you're on the Espresso Aficionado Discord, uh, Carlos is there and he listens very heavily to the community. Uh, so you can go in there and see a lot of. Uh, there's actually a meticulous thread there. I would recommend going and checking out. Someone who's in EAF, please paste um, the thread in the chat right now. Um, um, and on, on uh, replay, I'll, I'll have the chat show up so people can click on that. So someone please put the link there for it, uh, maybe even for the meticulous thread, and then people can join and, uh, you know, say things that they're, they're they're looking for. But this has full control over the flow uh, as regards time, the pressure as regards time. You can flow or pressure profile. You can switch them up for the pre-infusion or for the infusion. It might be nice to have some more steps, but... Uh, to kind of separate them, but the fact of the matter is, is you can control steps by just clicking on the line. So what I mean by that is, if you have, if you set your infusion to eight bar, and you have a line like this, you can click, like say here, five seconds in, and you can change that. You can change it so that it goes from eight down to like three, and then you can click another place on the line, and immediately it sets another step. So like on the decent, where you set up steps to where it's like, if it hits three bar of pressure, move on. If it hits 12 grams, move on. This one, you're doing all of that, but on the same graph. So it might be nice to have some some, uh, some more kind of uh, uh, control, uh, not control, but the separation there. 
Um, and then you have the weight as well uh, that tracks during it and, and, and uh, the temperature. Now, my biggest things that I'm hoping will be on the final product is temperature profiling. I think that is a very uh, a thing that I think a lot of people would really like. A bigger reservoir would be really nice and then destroying all of the bugs because there tend to be some. And I would also, I don't have, uh, maybe they have a working application for a phone, but I would really like a really nice application that is just as easy and intuitive as it is on the laptop for the final version for both Android and iPhone. Um, so I'm sure they're working on that as well but um yeah so anyway um yeah so last time i'll say this i have not had time with both these these just arrived today so i'm not going to give any fully articulated thoughts on either of these grinders right now I, I i just can't do that because i can't i i take time with grinders and with these i am going to publish a full probably 40 minute review of, of both of these grinders on uh, right before the Kickstarter is over so that if you have pledged at a cheap price, you can pull out if I have a lot of negative things to say or if other people come out with negative things to say. I don't want to sound pompous in that. You're going to pull off if I'd say something negative. So, um, but there is a, there's a possibility that I hate these birds or that I think the 064 is not as good as the 078 or something along those lines. Uh, maybe the 064 is not worth it. I don't know. Whatever it might be, I will post those before the Kickstarter. So keep your eyes peeled, but I will not do it until I have more than adequate time with these grinders. So thank you. I will not be doing that. All right. For the meticulous, kind of a TLDW. Uh, you have integrated scale. The whole tray is that scale, and it actually is really nice, really uh, uh, accurate, um, uh, which I tested with a 100 bar, uh, 100 bar, 100 pounds. Oh my God, 100 pounds. That would be heavy. 100 gram uh, calibrated weight. Um, you have, uh, you know, some fellow aesthetics up here with the knob, but you can control and do a, a simple single bar uh, or single flat bar, I should say, profiles on here, controlling temperature, uh, what the top pressure is, um, and, and whether or not you have pre infusion. As far as the specs on the pre infusion, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm sure that'll be, I'm sure it'll be changed and changed and changed again and again and again before the final is released. Um, so you have some control if you don't feel like using an application. So if you want to do just nine bar shots, six bar shots for turbos or something like that, you can easily preset them using just this knob. Now, if you want extra granular control, you'll have to use the application or a, a desktop, in which case you could control fully the flow, how long the flow happens, um, move on if it hits a certain pressure and vice versa. If you do pressure, you can move on if it hits a certain flow rate. Now, right now they have not integrated output flow so what's coming into the cup which i think is a mistake and i assume they're working on that as well so that is not currently something on this version i have so version 8 does not have output flow so that means you have input flow which is which is taking calculations they're doing it in a different way than the decent i can't really share how they're doing it but they're doing it in a different way than the decent and they they, they, they say is pr uh, probably more accurate and so you have input flow rate uh, based off this lever system um, that is being calculated and showed but the output flow onto the actual cup, onto the scale, is not being calculated. But that should be an incredibly easy fix. It's a simple algorithm of taking time and the weight easy. So um, that's something that, I mean, you could I could put my Akai on there and have it with uh, another app. But it would be nice to have it fully integrated into the same application itself. So this, in its current phase, it is not ready for launch, obviously. There are a lot of things that need to be uh, added. But I think it's on a good track. Um, I think they need to, you know, increase this, increase the span of this. I would love to, um, I would love to have more um, information on the temperatures. So maybe a way that we could see kind of the four temp probes. I'm uh, mostly for my nerdiness. I'd like to see kind of how the the. <clears throat> how the four different temperature uh, probes are reading the water at every given moment. I think that'd be kind of neat. But uh, in all seriousness, you know, for the majority user, just one aggregate temp is probably nice. Um, and I'm curious... Um I'm curious to have, uh, yeah, those controls, those kind of breaking up into steps for the uh, for the actual profiling itself in order to just keep it a little bit more clean, a little bit easier to kind of intuitive to look at. Maybe having a, a data log at the end, that would be really nice. Um, but right now, they just kind of have those graphs that kind of pop up. But anyway... That is my first impression of this. I hope that uh, it was helpful. And if I miss anything egregious, you know, please let me know and I will uh, let you all know. But the price is fifteen hundred U.S. dollars, one thousand five hundred. Um, so let people put in regards for a time we will be good to compare it with the BF eighty three is the only other. Okay, yeah. The temp profiling would be hard to be ever achieved as there is nowhere cold water to come and be mixed in. Yes, that is absolutely true. And when I say temp profiling, I'm not saying to the extent that the decent offers because that does necessitate cold water coming in. But I do think it is definitely achievable with some sort of, um, with the temperature control in here to raise or lower five degrees prior to exit. I don't think that would be too, too difficult. And in fact, I know of some technology that can offer that. It is something I can't, uh, it, it is something out there.
I won't say more about it, but I do know that there is that is a possibility to up, to raise or lower by a few degrees uh, prior to output. And so I think that is something that you would be able to achieve to an extent, whether it's a declining temperature profile or a raising temperature profile. That is something I would not be surprised that you'd be able to go, especially if you do a hot bloom on a blooming espresso and then over 30 seconds, you would be able to lower it even more because the time is so long. You should be able to lower that, but we'll see. Um, I doubt it'll be too much, but... Um, yeah, I was, so anyway, all right. Um, in the name of automated machines with profiles, have you ever tried the Lucas 75? No, I have not. Can you save custom profiles in the machine or is it just factory profiles? You can save, um, this BDB. I don't know what that means. I have BDB getting this. Nice. Um, let's see. Can you test fit the Turbo Burr and the Ogen too? Um, yes, I absolutely can do that. And I will in the video for sure. Hey, if you have too many sculpture, you can bring the 078 uh, to, to, to insult to me. No, I'll be giving two of them immediately away to Patreon after my review. Two I'll be keeping until I am able to conduct particle size analysis using a, a laser. And then I'll give those two away as well, uh, along with all my other grinders for that matter. Um, is the 078 quieter than the 064? Yes, by a large margin. Um, let's see. Uh, they're aiming for 150 mils total. So smaller or diluted spovers are possible. Yes. Um, would you get decent if you had the money? Um, I, honestly, um, I'd pro I, I don't know enough about this to say I would get it over the decent, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking probably this now, whether or not you should back it. I don't like to make that call for you. I, this is not in its final stage. It's hard for me to recommend you backing it because well, it's not in its final stage and I don't know, like there's no guarantee it will get to a final stage that will be, that will fix all the problems that I've talked about. Do I believe the problems will be fixed? Yeah, I think they'll be fixed. Can I say in good faith, you should back this because it'll be fixed? No, I can't. Um, I have, I mean, I can't do that. Um, and, and so in order to like maintain pace with you all, I can't, I can't say that you should. I just wanted to get on, show you kind of some of the capabilities, where it's at in its current phase with the current prototype and hopefully help you make an informed decision when the Kickstarter uh, starts tomorrow or whenever you watch this video. Maybe the Kickstarter has happened. This is a super outdated video, but regardless, I think that is enough for today. Thank you so much. I think I've answered a decent amount of uh, about this. So, okay. Pretty sure all the people will back into 064 will cancel right after the day. The grinder is awfully loud and awful sound, plus stalling motor being sketchy. Yeah, maybe, honestly. All right. Well, thanks so much. I see people are dropping off because I've said goodbye. So I'm going to actually say goodbye. Thanks for having, we peaked at like, over 800 people watching. That's freaking awesome. Um, uh, you know, feel free to check out my Patreon if you'd like. Uh, I'll be giving grinders away soon once I can get these staggum particle an an analysis. Um, two of these will immediately be going away right after my, my review. Thank you so much. Um, actually, before we end, Emily, come on and talk about your experience. So Emily Bryant is here, dirty scumbags. So did you just call your followers dirty scumbags? Well, some of them are surely dirty scumbags. Hi, um, I am Emily. Uh, check out my channel if you want to shameless plug. Uh, this is the Meticulous, and my only relationship is that I've had it for a while, and I do demos for Meticulous in the northeastern area, so New York City, and then I got to drop it off for you. Uh, but I've had it for about two months, and I have been m taking so many notes and sending back so much feedback. Uh, like before, it wasn't able to do blooming. Now I can do blooming. I'm pretty sure in the next update, you'll be able to actually change the profile manually with this little dial. So you don't need to rely on the flat nine bar. You can input it yourself and then save it. Kind of like a Breville dual boiler Slayer mod. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a cool thought there. Uh, and there's going to be tons of updates. Yep. Um, but I have no bias if you buy it or not. That's up to you. Kind of like, you know, it's whatever you want to do. Um, but it is fun. Uh, yeah. I cool. Don't know. Anyway, then Emily's had for a couple months, so I thought it'd be nice to have her hop on and just give a little of her own experience. But thank you for watching. Um, and now for real, I'm going to head out. I love you and uh, peace out.